Hello, this is Cartman Productions, and today I will be showing you how to put a chain on a go-kart with basic tools. No, don't make it go faster. We are going to be putting a chain on this go-kart with basic tools. So if we take a look at our cart real fast, you can see we have a chain run into the axle and we got what's called a jack shaft right here. We're not gonna get too much into that. I can make a video later on it if you'd like. And then we've got a torque converter up here with two sprockets. There's there's one down in in there as well. Um and so we need to figure out how to put a chain on this. So if you buy your ordinary, you know, 10-foot box of chain from wherever, I got this from North 40. Uh, you can get it from Tractor Supply as well. Uh, I think it's a little bit cheaper at North 40, at least where I live. But uh, we go ahead and open this up. As you can see, it's unopened. This is number 40 chain I'm using here. Uh, you can figure out what chain size it is pretty easily if you have the old chain. Um, or uh, if you're unsure, you could just... Uh, Ask me, I guess. <laughs> um, it's pretty easy to tell, though. Uh, main chain sizes on go-karts is uh, 35, uh, 40, uh, 41, and 50, uh, and then sometimes 25. Um, that's really all you would need to know if you're working on go-karts. Um, but really all you need to know is your chain size if you just have one cart. So if we look at this, this is a 10-foot roll of chain right here and it's a continuous roll, so that means that this is a 10-foot strand of chain. Uh, here's our master link right here, we'll get into that in a minute. But, uh, yeah, that's a 10-foot strand of chain. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think this is going to take exactly 10 feet of chain to wrap that around. So we're going to have to shorten it somehow. And that's where this thing comes in. This is a chain breaker, as you can see it's pretty heavily used, I have a ton of crap in there, but... Uh, I got this one at Tractor Supply, you can get it from wherever, uh, and you can see this one, if I pull it up, it's for sizes 25 through 60, so that'll get all your go-kart chain sizes. Um, and the way it works is uh, there's threads in there, so when you turn this, you see that needle in there will actually start to retract, and you can use that to push the pin out of a chain, to so see if you pull this together, that opens. So. If I were to grab my 40 chain, I'm not actually going to do it yet. I'll show you how to do it, but, gosh, this is a bad angle. <laughs> um, I can actually take and put my chain breaker on that chain. Sorry, I'm trying to do it to the whole strand. Here, let me zoom in. Hopefully get a better view. So if you look closely, right inside there, there's a good angle. You will see that that pin kind of moves in, and it will actually go in and go against one of these link pins right here, like uh, one of those little pins there. So it will uh, actually go in and begin push it out if you keep screwing it. And you do it on both sides um, and get the, the plate out and then there's two ways of doing it from there depending on what you have. One is easier, one is slightly harder. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it both ways. So, let's go ahead and start off with sizing the chain for the cart. So if I zoom out here, we don't need to be zoomed into my garage floor, you will see Big sprocket there and a little sprocket there. Hold on, let me lift this baby up. That looks pretty good. So, if we look there, you will see a sprocket here. So the chain's already on the other side. It's kind of warm since I just welded it. Um, and then torque converter pulley over here and we need to get the chain around that at the perfect length. So here's how I do it. I just take my trusty old roller chain um, and 
and grab some. Just unroll some of it and put it around here. Now what you want to do is you want to get it around the smaller sprocket, as you will see. I'm trying to get it around the smaller sprocket right now. I'm not going to zoom way in. If you got a centrifugal clutch, this works too. Just go on the sprocket of the centrifugal clutch. Um, all this stuff can be applied for other drive systems that use roller chain. So as you can see, I've got some chain coming out the bottom. And so now what you want to do is you want to get the back side of your chain around here. And you want to make sure that that up there is tight. So you want to pull that tight. And you want to try to get it as tight as you can. So it always, 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 if you can hop it one more link over, do that. I don't think this one can. So we may... Alright, so if you look here, you will see the end of the chain matches up with this. So you just size it up kind of like that. Um, and you can see that this link is an outside link. If it were up here to the point where these outer plates are meeting here, then you would need to figure something else out. You'd probably need an offset link. So you'd have to break it here and add an offset link. Uh, I'll show you guys about offset links as well. Um, but you see this is an inside one. Now you want two inside ones, two inside links. So see this one's got the holes in it. That's where you put your master link. So we're going to break it there and there. Uh, we're going to push these two pins here out, these two. And uh, then after that, we can put a master link on it. And then um, I can almost guarantee this chain is going to loosen up. So later on, we could pull another link and pull it from here and then put a offset link in and then hop it one more tooth over to get it even tighter. Uh, but for now... Uh, we're just going to do it like this. I'll show you what an offset link looks like and how to install it as well on to the uh, breaking the chain. Alrighty, so as you can see here, we have our links we're going to break. This side is side going on the cart. This sides are excess. Um, so we're going to break it right there. We're going to pull those two pins out. So I'm going to try to get a good angle on this. So if you look, you can see that it is going to, as you crank it, now you want to make sure these pin, pins are lined up, but as you crank it, I like tighten up and you'll see or you can see the pins on the other pin and as you crank it it will actually push the pin through And as you can see, it pushed it through. Now, at first, you only want to push it through a little bit because there's still a plate on there that's going to restrict you from being able to push it all the way through. So you see, it's kind of broken there. So it's called a chain breaker. Um, but it pushed the pin through, and now the pin's out of that plate. So what we do now is we do it to the one behind it as well. Alright, so as you can see, it came through, and when we loosen it back up and pull this off, our plate fell off. This is a plate we wanted to get out of there. Now we're at the point where you have to decide how you want to do it. If you have an angle grinder, this is just Harbor Freight one, it's like 10 or 15 bucks, it's great, um, and uh, a sanding disc on it, uh, it's really easy. Uh, if not, use a hammer and a little metal pick which I'll need to go grab uh, so if you were to go the hammer route I'll kind of tell you how you do this so you would clamp this side or one side to a table and then you would use a metal pin in there or pick in there and just hammer it until it came out um, that can be kind of time consuming 
So, personally, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but that's how you do that. Um, that's fairly easy. Um, both of them will end with the pin out. But if you go the angle grinder route, like I am, um, then you kind of set it on the ground there, as you can see. If I can zoom in. <laughs> so you set it on the ground there. And then you tank, you'll take your angle grinder and you will actually grind the top of that pin off. Kind of like that. So uh, what it will do is there's like a little uh, flare on the ends of these to keep the, the plate on. So we just pushed it through. But that's still there. It just deformed it slightly so that it can push it through. Um... But what we need to do is we need to grind off that little piece entirely. So you just grind off a little piece of the pin and then to the point where it will uh, slide through freely. Now I'm going to go grab some safety glasses. Always use safety glasses when you're grinding. So as you can see we're just going to grind that off. Now be careful of your fingers here. I'm probably doing it the sketchy way. Somebody's going to get mad at me and say, Oh, you're going to lose your fingers. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, it, I guess it would be better if you could uh, clamp it down to something and do this, um, but I'm too lazy to, so. So as you can see, I grinded it down, and both these pins should slide out freely now. That can go, you won't need that. So that's how you break the chain. Now uh, I'm going to do a quick look at offset lengths. Now here's an offset length for 40 chain. Focus. Now what this does, you can see it's got a pin in it, so what you do is let's go ahead and Probably easier to see if I do this. So you just take some pliers and see how it's bent. Use some pliers to uh, not do that. To uh, bend it straight. So then the pin will just slide right through. Now this thing is absolutely tiny. You do not want to lose this. Especially if you're doing this with 35 chain. Can't tell you how many of those I've lost. And then this little pin here will slide through, and you're left with this. Now what this does, as you can see, is it will actually add a link on. So if you put this on here, then slide this through. Kind of turn it in a little bit until it goes through. And then put this pin through there. I'm not going to do it right now, but it will add another link to your chain. So it adds a singular link instead of having to add two or take away two. So if you take away two, but you only needed to take away one, then you do that. The reason for that is you can't, if you want to just get rid of this, you can't break it here. You have to pull both off. But then it could get you back to here. So, uh, and having to hop two teeth on the sprocket, you only need to hop one. It's quite useful. Um... I've had to use it in many situations, uh, however, the more of these you have on your chain, the more likely it is that one's going to break at a certain point. Alrighty, so now we're going to show you how to install the chain that you just set to the right length. Now hopefully, I wasn't, hopefully I didn't set the length of my chain short or I get to break it again which is always a fun part so hopefully I got my length right I'm fairly certain that I did but there's always that chance that I was being big brain and got it wrong. No, I got it right. Alright. 
So you will now see these two actually meet up. So you want these two ends to meet up. If it's a different type of end like this, you don't want it. Uh, it has to be these two ends here. Now, you could have an offset link on this if this were one link too short. You take your little baggie with your master link in it. You cut the top off of it or open it some other way. Sometimes I rip it, but that takes forever, so I decided to just cut it. Um, and you will see there are three parts that were in this. You don't want to lose these. These can be very small. Not too bad for this size of chain, but 35 chain especially. Uh, so you have this uh, link here. This is your main link piece. And then you have a plate. looks very similar to the plate we just removed. And then you have this clip here that slides on there. So what you need to do is you need to slide this link into those two holes. See, it connects it. See that they came through. Uh, this is usually easiest to do on the sprocket. Um, if it, you've made your chain slightly shorter in anticipation that it's going to lengthen or stretch, it's not going to lengthen, but it's going to stretch over time, uh, do it off the sprocket and then hop it on. Um, I can show another video of hopping it on later at a different time. But then you just slide the plate on there like so, and then your master link goes in those little slits. Well, not your master, you know what I mean. This little uh, clip here goes in there, and then you want to grab a pair of pliers like this, preferably not needle nose. I find regular ones easy. Alright, just popped on. So now, if we take a closer look at this, you will see the link is on there. It's got that little clip on it, and this chain is fully assembled. This, this ain't going anywhere. So, we are now going to Make sure that it looks all right. That's not too too bad on the tension. I don't think this tension is too terrible. It's a little bit loose when it tightens up, but that's okay for now. This chain will stretch, and eventually I'll have to cut it again. Uh, I'll have to break it again and put a uh, offset link in it for sprockets. If you have it on an axle, you might want to get some collars. Invest in some collars. I got these collars for a pair of collars for ten bucks on eBay. They're split collars. They're real nice. Um, split collars are usually better than ordinary collars because you can put them on without having to pull your axle apart. And now we should actually look at this vehicle because this is a, a brand new vehicle I just picked up a few days ago. We're calling it the Roadkill Cart. Uh, as you can see, it's a live axle cart, 10 inch rear tires, uh, full suspension. Suspension works real good. Can't really see it, but it works. <laughs> Um, you can see we've got this uh, fuel tank here, which actually uh, has a really funky output. So we zip-tied a Predator fuel tank on there. These seats, as you can see, pretty worn, um, but they're okay. Uh, the seat back actually is completely disconnected, so it just wiggles around. I can pull this whole seat back off. Uh, the other one's still intact, though. It's, it's pretty nice. The steering system, uh, as you can see, it's a geared steering setup with ball bearings. Turns the front wheels. 8 inch front wheels um, and then you got uh, front suspension as well kind of hard to see it but it moves um, it also has headlights too which I just still need to wire up and uh, fully hydraulic brakes so see there's a master cylinder and you have front brakes oh gosh I gotta get an angle on this baby <laughs> oh gosh can you see that yeah, you can kind of see the disc right in uh, there. But yeah, it's got front disc brakes. As well as rear. See the big fat disc sitting back here. 
This thing's awesome. It only goes 17 miles an hour, though, because this thing weighs like three to 500 pounds. And uh, the Predator 212, the stock, has a real hard time pulling it along, but it works. Uh, it only goes 17 miles an hour because I've geared it so much for torque. I had to install this new sprocket because my old sprocket was a 40 tooth one and it was ripping up the torque converter belts. So I decided to put that on there. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know if you guys want more tutorial vid videos like this. Uh, I can show how to install a brand new torque converter. I can, I can show how to change out tires. I'm thinking about changing up these tires to 8 inch tires, so I might do a video on that. Uh, might do a lubing video, I don't know, just let me know what you guys want to see, um, but, uh, till then, this is Cartman Productions, I'll see you in the next one.